This video is going to give you a behind the scenes look into a digital open ended escape room activity that I've created using Google Slides and one Google form. As you're going to see, if you want to make your slides only escape room kind of cheat proof, there's a whole bunch of different hacks and tricks that you're going to want to do to lock that Google Slides activity down so that students can't just like click from slide to slide to slide, which would defeat the purpose of the whole thing. Because some of these hacks and tricks are a little more advanced, I want to make a couple of disclaimers right off the bat. So first of all, these are going to be some advanced Google Slides techniques and tricks that I'm going to be showing you. And so for that reason, I don't recommend this process for anybody who's brand new to Google Slides or if you're looking for like a step by step how to create your first escape room. This is probably not the video for you. I do have other resources and links that will be down in the comments below. If you're looking for more of a basic step by step sort of escape room tutorial, I have those for you. Just kind of click down on the links below. The other disclaimer I have to make is this process I'm going to show you is actually not the process I would recommend if I was just creating an escape room like for one class of students to use kind of one time. Um, if I was creating something just new for my students, I would use a different process that I also explain in some resources below. But basically, I would recommend either putting your first slide into a Google site or using some Google Docs as supplemental to your single Google slide. Now, the reason that I am not doing that those particular processes and the reason I'm doing the method that you're going to see in this video is because when I'm creating escape rooms, I'm generally doing it to share with a large group of people so that different people can download them and customize them to meet their needs for their students. And I have yet to find a good way to share a Google site as a template with people who are, you know, outside my organization and if you go the Google Docs route, it's just a lot of links and sharing and a lot of things to sort of keep track of. And so for me, someone who is sharing these escape rooms en masse with lots of people who need to download editable copies, that is why I'm keeping everything inside of a single Google slideshow. And it's why I'm going to use why I'm using the hacks and things that I'm going to show you in this. So. If you fall into that category of someone who needs to create escape rooms or similar Google slide activities that can be templated and shared, whether it's for you just creating a bunch of them for different classes of students or whether you're sharing them with people, or if you have downloaded an escape room that kind of looks like what I'm going to show you, whether it's mine or somebody else's, and you just want a little bit more information about how it works and how you can edit it, you are in the right place. So stick around and let's dive in. OK, here we are in the back end of a Google Slides escape room that I've created called Spaceship Escape. I'm going to give you a quick tour of kind of the main features of this. So what you're looking at on the screen right now, this is the main room slide. All of the things on this slide, pretty much every picture, or every item is a clickable link that when you're in presentation mode will take you to either a different slide or an external website, maybe a YouTube video. Um, and there's also a link here on the keypad that takes you to a Google form where you put in the code to see if you have solved the puzzle. Um, if I just click on here and click A, Control A, you can see all of the different things that are links. And so basically everything that has kind of a blue line is something that's been added into this room. And most of them are links to different things. Scrolling through here, there's a bunch of blank buffer slides. And I'll talk more about those in a little bit. And then we also have internal clue slides. So these are images that I've created that contain information that the person solving the escape room is going to need to actually solve the puzzle. So in this case, there's like a key that's all jumbled up. And then here is they go through some more steps and they actually get the key to solve it. Um, here's uh, the slide that you click on to get there. And then at the end, I also have a few like extra template slides. So when I'm sharing this with people, if they didn't want their escape room to be about music, for example, you could change up this last slide and put whatever you wanted in the key and kind of swap out that information. So that's the basics. The other thing it's probably important to mention is that, like I said, this keypad goes to a Google form. Um, and I'll say I can pull that up right here. So this is an example of the Google form that is just linked here inside of this. Um, and then there's also a few like YouTube videos and external links that I have incorporated that aren't inside of this slideshow. So here is a timer that when you're playing it, it'll play live and count you down 30 minutes. Um, this particular link 
that's here goes to a quiz that I created on another website. Here's another YouTube video. Um, and so pretty much everything that I have created lives inside of this slideshow. And when you have everything inside a slideshow, as you've probably found if you've tried this, um, and there's a bunch of slides, it's pretty easy for students to kind of cheat and just kind of click from slide to slide to slide. So we wanna minimize that as much as possible, hence the hacks that I'm about to show you. So the first thing you've probably already noticed is that a lot of the slides in this slide deck have this little eyeball icon that with a little line through it. And you'll notice it popped up here and said, this slide is skipped while presenting. Slide skipping is the first tool in your tool belt for kind of locking down your slideshow. You can turn the slide skipping on or off by simply right clicking on the slide you want and selecting skip slide. And what that does is when the slideshow is in presentation mode, it tells Google presentation, Google slide presentation, that these slides don't exist, just skip over them. So if I were to take this and just go straight up into presentation mode, only the first two slides would show up. And then I would be sort of locked on that slide because everything else has been skipped. You can see there, there's a bunch of skipped slides. So that's the first way to sort of lock things down. Now you can't do that alone because as you could see, I could go in and like still get to other slides that were skipped. And so there's a few other things that you're also going to need to do. Another thing that I recommend doing on your slides, especially those that like have other links or these like clue slides here, is I put a self-linking invisible rectangle over top of anything that's not a link on the slide. So for example, in this particular slide, I have this lovely self-linking rectangle, there it is. And when students click on this slide, rather than going to the next slide, which would be the default action, it refers them back to slide number eight, which is the slide that we're on. Um, with all of these hacks, I have more videos that go into a bit more detail, so don't panic if you don't know how to do what I just showed you. This is just kind of a quick overview, and definitely check the links below for more information. So we've talked about skipping the slide, we have talked about the self-referential slide. One thing to point out with that too is if like, let's say this particular box was a link back to the home tab, I would want to make sure that any links I had were on top of the self-referring invisible link. So those are two things that you can do. The third thing, probably one of the most important things, has to do with how you share your slide with your students, the share link. So Hopefully you are familiar a bit with the sharing settings in Google Slides. Um, you definitely need to make sure that it's set to anyone on the internet with this link can view. But then there's a little bit more tweaking that you need to do in order to hide that black navigation bar. When we clicked on present here again, um, we've got this that sort of makes it really easy to cheat on this escape room. Um, if I want this to go away, that particular black bar, this is where the preview code hacking comes into place. And I go through this in more detail, and I've got videos on this in more detail um, that if you get one of my escape rooms, you can kind of go through it. But basically, you want to make sure your Google Slides are shareable, and then you take everything from the word edit on in the URL, and you replace it with preview question mark rm equals minimal. What that's going to do is it's going to remove that little black bar. And so it just makes it a lot harder for somebody who's participating in your escape room to click straight through. They're going to have to actually like click on the links in the sort of nonlinear way that you've set up for them to solve the puzzle. Along with that, the third thing that I'd like to do is link to the slides in a new window. Um, if you just click on something and like I want to link to, let's say here is slide number eight is one of the clue slides, right? And in this particular escape room, you get to slide eight from this document here. You'll notice I have that particular link set up as a URL rather than just linking directly to slide eight like I did on the self-referential link. And the reason I like to have it open in a new window is A, if you have a timer going, um, as long as the current tab stays open and they're not switching to like other slides within the same tab, that timer will continue to go. Um, and it also just makes it a little easier to keep that main room open as students are navigating through all the different clues. So what I do for links, even if it is a link to a slide that's in the current slideshow, is I add it 
as if I was adding an external URL. And so how you do that is if I was including a link to this slide, I don't think you can see my URL at the top, but I would highlight that URL and then I would paste it in just like I was linking to an external link. But the key is just like we did for the main room, um, we're gonna switch everything with the word edit and sub in that little bit of code that's the preview question mark rm equals minimal. So that's what I do with all of the different pages. One disclaimer, if you're making a bunch of copies and you do that, you will have to recreate those links every time, um, just the same as you would for the Google form. If you are gonna create your own copy of, let's say this escape room that I've created, and you have your own copy of the Google form, you would have to re-link the form to this document um, with a new URL. So again, I know a lot of that is gonna be confusing, especially if you're new to Google Slides and sharing with Google stuff. So definitely ask me down in the comments if you have any questions. Um, and like I said, there's a lot more resources down there for you as well. One other thing I wanna point out, along with adding these things in a new slide, is I like to include this little bit of verbiage on any slides that are gonna open in a new window. And I also put this on like my Google Form too. And it says, press Control Shift Tab to return to the main room or just close this tab. Um, what that Control Shift Tab is, is it's just like a keystroke shortcut that takes the person looking at a website to the tab they were previously on. So if this tab that you're looking at here opened in a new window, if I were to press Control Shift Tab as a viewer, it would just kick me back to the main room. Really what we're trying to do is create the illusion that this is actually like just a website rather than a Google Slides. Again, that's a big part of the reason if you don't have to use a single slides file, I recommend Google Sites. But um, we wanna give the illusion that it's just a website and so putting in those little cheat codes essentially that students can type in to just jump back to the previous tab can be really helpful. Okay, the last thing, probably one of the most obvious things if you were to look at this is you'll notice I have all these sort of white buffer slides and those are put in there very intentionally as well. Um, if you were playing this particular escape room and you clicked on the link that went to the slide that I have open here, which is just like a little letter slide, it's gonna open up in a new window. But then once I've opened up a skipped slide in a new window, I could still technically arrow from slide to slide, which is what we don't want students to do. So to eliminate that, um, I add in like six blank slides that just say close this tab to return to the room. And the hope and the thought behind that is that even if a student like clicks the arrow a couple of times, it's not gonna take them anywhere else. They're just gonna keep seeing this Sam close this tab message. And so the hope and the thought is that they'll close the tab before they click it actually seven times, um, which would take them to the next clue. So again, all of this, none of it is like perfect. It's all just little hacks that you can collaborate together. Again, why if I didn't have to share this out as a template, I would recommend using um, Google Sites instead because you don't have these problems with Google Sites. Okay, so, so far we've talked about all the different hacks that I've used in this escape room to make it feel like a website for students. We talked about the skip slide, we talked about the invisible box that's on top of all the slides, so it kind of makes them link to themselves when you click on them. We talked about hacking and changing the URL to include preview, question mark, RM minimal. We talked about opening up slides in a new window, and we talked about skipping slides. Uh, what I'm gonna talk about now, just to wrap this video up, is if you do wanna make edits to a slideshow like this, and you're worried about um, changing or you know or breaking some of these hacks, they're actually pretty easy to edit, even if you don't mess with any of the links or anything else. So for example, let's go to this particular slide here. So let's say um, I didn't want this to be a music escape room or I want to increase the difficulty level and I want it to include like harder note values or something like that. I can go here in this particular case because I have an editable slide. I could go here. I could swap out this for anything I wanted um, and then I could go file, download, PNG image, and then I could take that picture and upload it here onto this slide, okay? And now I haven't changed any links or anything, but because I've just made a few edits to the slideshow itself and to the slide itself, um, it's gonna change this escape room entirely. 
Another important edit that you'll want to do if you're using something like this as a template is you will want to make a template of the Google Form lock, and then you'll wanna put the link for that template here to replace the link from like the original version of the lock. I give more information about that here. It says to have access to the results data, you'll need to make a copy and I sort of explain it, but it's that kind of thing that you're gonna need to do to customize something like this without sort of messing with any of the hacks. Other things you can do is you can hop onto any of these clues and just like change the text. I mean, they're all editable. You might need to remove or slide over that invisible link that I have on all of these. That is something that's kind of a pain about them um, is that you have to kind of move them over if I want to edit this. So like, let's say um, I'm changing this music escape room into a math one. I might want to change this word to be earth math instead of earth music. Um, you can absolutely change that changes the context of the escape room without changing the functionality. I just remember to slide that blank box over. Um, so that's kind of it in a nutshell. Hopefully this helps give you a few ideas on some different things you can do. It kind of gives you kind of gives you an idea as to my thought process when I was creating this. Um, as always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Um, if you've purchased or downloaded an escape room from me, my contact information is in there as well. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Like I said, check out the resources below this video on YouTube for more links, um, more tutorials, different things, um, because I do know that the stuff I've talked about in this video is some pretty kind of advanced Google Slides stuff, definitely not for beginners. So if you are a beginner, I've got resources for you as well. Um, I, I guess that's it. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Subscribe to my channel um, for more of these kind of videos and we'll talk to y'all soon.